But what does the theater have to do with democracy? What does the theater have to do with this republic we live in? Well, it may be a coincidence, but I don't think so, that 2,500 years ago, democracy and the theater were invented in the same decade in the same city. Is that because the theater created democracy, or was it because the democracy needed the theater? But what we know is that 2,500 years ago in Athens, there were festivals, the Festival of Dionysius, and there would be storytellers who would tell stories to the audience. Three days, they would gather on the side of the hill there and listen to these stories. And then somebody had the idea that rather than just telling a story to you, I should actually turn 90 degrees to my left and talk to somebody else on stage at the same time. Somebody invented the idea of dialogue. Rumor has it, it was somebody named Thespis, hence Thespian. But when that little shift, 90 degrees to the left, happened, it changed everything. Because to start with, it changed the relationship of the audience to the stage. Suddenly, I'm not the authority who's telling you the story, who owns the truth, who's telling it to you, and you sit back and you receive the truth. But rather, I'm one of two people up here talking to each other. And we know the theater, right? It's conflict. Two people with different points of view. So suddenly we're saying the truth doesn't belong to any one person. The truth is only revealed in the debate between different points of view. That's something that you have to believe if you believe in democracy. Otherwise, you're just pretending to believe in democracy. But if you really believe in democracy, you believe truth will only be revealed by the conflict between different points of view. And what's the other thing that happens at that moment? Is that instead of sitting back and listening to me tell you the truth, I'm asking you to empathize with me, to see things from my point of view, to walk in my shoes. And then another character speaks back, and I'm asking you to imagine yourself in their shoes from their point of view. That act of empathy of imagining what it looks like to somebody who is not you, imagining what it looks like from somebody else's point of view, is the key emotional act that we have to make as citizens of a democracy. Again, if we don't do that, if we don't imagine the experience of other people, we're not really believers in democracy. We're not really citizens. And one, a couple of examples from my life of seeing this. When Angels in America happened, I was privileged to be present at the creation. And, yeah. And what I saw is the impact that that play had didn't happen because characters made arguments that convinced the audience they were right. The reason that it had an impact was that after seven hours, people walked out of the theater and found that they had identified for seven hours with people who were actively, proudly, complexly gay. And nobody could sit through that seven hours and not realize that they had an enormous amount in common with those gay characters. That actually, those gay people were speaking for them. Those gay people were speaking for America. And you could feel the shift in the culture. Or with Hamilton, more recently, when uh, I'm, I'm proud to say that President Obama said, the only thing Dick Cheney and I have in common is we like Hamilton. <laughs> And, and when Dick Cheney and Lynn came down to the public theater, I mean, they, they were on the waiting list, they waited their turn, and they rose to the top of the waiting list, and I had one of those moments of going, well, I'm actually the only person who knows they're at the top of the waiting list. I could move them off, but no. The right thing to do was let them see it. And then they saw it, and they loved it, and I had a crisis of conscience. I felt like I must be doing something wrong. And what did I do whenever I have a crisis of conscience? I called my rabbi, Tony Kushner, and I explained to Tony, and he reminded me of verities, as rabbis are prone to do. He said, no, 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 Oscar, you're misunderstanding the point of theater. Of course, Hamilton contradicts many things that the Cheneys believe. But the point is, they had an experience of identifying with and loving people of color and seeing those people as owners of this country, as creators of this country. And that experience is deeper than their ideas. That experience is their human experience, and that's going to worm in there like a virus, and that's how people change. So I just want to say, in a democ every culture has 
art that cannot be supported by the market. In our culture, a democracy, the people should be supporting the art, not just the market. And that's what the National Endowment for the Arts stands for. The idea that the culture belongs to everybody. It's not just the possession of the wealthy or of the educated or of the urban. It belongs to everybody. And if you share that belief with me, go to artsactionfund.org and show your support. And remember, it just takes a couple of minutes to write your congressperson, and they pay attention when you write or when you call. This is not a Democratic issue with a capital D. It's not a Republican issue with a capital of R. But it is a small D Democratic and a small R Republican issue. It's a human issue. It's an American issue. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting us. Yeah, I see you, sis. Wow, what a good speaker.